I see uh, too many Christians that are not honest. They want to give the impression. So we come together on Sunday. Put our nice clothes on. Sing our nice songs. Right? And, and what's going on is you look around at all these well-dressed people singing praises to God and you wonder to yourself I wonder what it is that they have that I don't have I wonder why all these people seem to be walking in victory and I'm the only one we're not very honest. We put our happy faces on. And we act like we've been saved. Delivered. Set free. Baptized in the Holy Ghost. And fire. You want to know how you can tell if someone has been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire? Their primary ministry will not be inside the walls of this building. The fire will carry you into your destiny. It's the fire that causes someone like Pastor Richard to put 80 hours per week in to make sure that this message gets to you today. Amen. Amen. The fire moto will carry you and cause you to not settle for religion but out of a, 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 a relationship with God that causes an exchange of power from him to me to you and you and you. Jesus was telling his disciples. Go to the poor. Like the person that you are. are is this uh, communicating well? See, join they say yes. Yes. Are you poor in spirit? Do you know it? Who said that? That's good. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So he told him, his, his disciples to go to the poor, ask the poor. In other words, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Not as one who has all the answers. But as one who knows the one. Who can set you free. And alter your destiny. Jesus said. In Luke chapter 4. As he was being. 
tempted by the devil. Kama vila he said, man cannot live by bread alone. He was quoting Deuteronomy. It says that man cannot live by bread alone. But by every word that comes from God. In verse 19 and 20 of Matthew chapter 10. So I wanted to share with you that uh, the, the main text uh, for the message is chapter verses 1 through 15. Nataka ni mapatie ujumbe kamili katika yale ile passage tumesoma mstari wa kwanza hadi 15 kwa mstari wa 10. If you read uh, the rest of the chapter, lakini ukisoma hayo maandiko yanayofuata, Jesus gives the worst motivational speech, speech ever. Huyo Yesu anatoa ule ujumbe mkali zaidi wa wa wale watu wa kunena. He told them to go he told them how to go and then he told them how bad it was going to be when they went I won't take your time to read through all of that today but I, I do want to read verse 19 and 20 this is what he said when they deliver you up do not worry about how or what you should speak. For it will be given you in that hour what you should speak. It will be given you what you should speak. He says, For it is not you who speak. But the spirit of your father who speaks what is he saying man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God Jesus is telling them you've got the goods it's in you our job is to release it and yes. let it out. Amen. Wow. You are loaded. You are not Now, in verses 11 to 15, I want to share a concept with you. Concepts. Uh, this concept is what drew me to this chapter. Uh, so everything that I said up to this point was an introduction. Now the saints are praying and hoping that the, the body of the message is shorter than the introduction. Hello. <laughs> With God, all things are possible. <laughs> so when you're preaching, do you ever say in closing? Yes, but I say several times. Yeah. <laughs> My wife said to me one day. I know what in closing means. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so I our wives are our worst critic. <laughs> and our best cheerleaders. Amen. I, I joke. <laughs> But I know that my wife believes in me. Um, and it is a tremendous source of strength and encouragement. Thank God for our wives. Okay, back to the word. Do you want to have someone read verses 11 through 15? 
make it easy. Yeah. Kumina moja inasema na mwisho wote au kijiji chochote mtakachoingia tafuteni nani humo aliye mtu mwaminifu mkae kwake hata mtakapotoka nani mkiingia katika nyumba isalimuni na nyumba ile ikisahili amani yenu na ifikie lakini kwamba haistahili amani yenu na iwarudie na mtu asipo wakarimisha wala kusikiliza maneno yenu mtakapo mtokapo katika nyumba ile au uje ule kumuteni mavumbi ya miguuni mwenu amini na wambia itakuwa rahisi nchi ya sodoma na gomora kustahimili adhabu ya siku ya hukumu kuliko mji ule Jesus is giving some instructions. Yesu Kristo anapeana maagizo to the 12 disciples. Kwa wale wanafunzi 12 about how they should conduct themselves when they go with the gospel. Vile watakavyojiweka wakipeleka injili. In verse 13, katika mstari wa 13, he says when you go to a household ukiingia katika nyumba if that household is worthy kama hiyo nyumba inastahili let your peace acha amani yako come upon it iwa uachi kama iwafikie but if it is not worthy lakini kama hiyo nyumba haistahili let your peace return to you amani yako naikurudie he's talking about a dynamic anaongea juu ya kitu muhimu whereby the peace that i possess ya kwamba ile amani niko nayo can be released to rest upon another person inaweza ikaachiliwa ikamfikia mtu or even a household ama hata jamii wow now when we say peace tukiongea tu ya amani we're not talking about an absence of conflict atongei juu ya kutokwepo na vita We're not talking about just getting along. Atungei tu ya kuwa kwamba hatugombani. We're talking about the shalom of God. Tunaongea tu ya shalom ya Mungu. The shalom peace of God. Na hii amani inayoitwa shalom ya Mungu is complete. Huwa ni kamilifu. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Haina chochote kilicho pungua wala kilicho pasuka we're talking about the impartation from your spirit man tunaongea ya kwamba kuna upachiko kutoka mtu wako wa kiungu wa ndani that is going out to a person or a household ambayo inatoka kutoka kwako ifikie nyumba ama jamii and he says that if they receive your peace if they're worthy of it let your peace rest Oh haleluya. Na kila ulichobeba wakikupokea na wao wanastahili kitawashukia. But if they reject it, lakini wakikikataa, take it back. Kipoke, yani kirudishe. Amen. Haleluya. It is um, one of the saddest things in the body of Christ. Ni kitu cha kuogofia katika mwili wa Kristo realizing that Jesus bought and paid for ya kwamba Yesu alinunua na akalipia for you to be free ya kwamba ukaweze kuwa huru and to be filled with the third person of the godhead na kwamba ukachawe na utatu wa Mungu ama yule watatu katika uungu ambaye ndio mtakatifu there is more power in this room kuna uwezo katika chumba hiki then most of us realize kuliko vile wewe na mimi tunaelewa Jesus is talking to his disciples Yesu Kristo anaongea na wanafunzi wake about releasing something supernatural from within them kuachilia kitu cha kiungu kutoka ndani mwao He was not just sending them out sio tu anawatuma to argue and convince someone that they need Jesus. He was charging them alikuwa anawatuma kwa uweza to release a dynamic from their spirit man kutoa kitu cha nguvu kilicholapia other people 
ambacho kinaweza kapotelewa na watu and where it rests na hicho kitu kikitulia kwako kwa nyumba yako that is your man of peace huyo sasa anaitwa mtu wako wa amani we're called to find our man of peace tumetumwa tukamtafute mtu wetu wa amani sisi wote and to let our peace rest upon that person na tukimpata tumpachike amani hiyo jiwe there are specific people kuna watu si kila mtu kuna watu maalum that you have been called to witness to wambao Mungu amekutuma wewe ni nida uwafikie i will never be able to reach them na hao pastor hawezi kuwafikia because they are your man of peace maana ni watu wako wewe wa amani everyone in this room kila mtu mahali hapa has a man of peace una mtu wa amani you know when you found him ukimpata utamjua when you when you uh, when that person recognizes their poverty of spirit wakati mmekutana watatambua umaskini wao wa roho when you find your man of peace ukimpata mtu wako wa amani witnessing is easy sasa kumhumiria wa rais it's not difficult haikui ngumu tena it's just simple inakuwa rais kabisa it's it's so easy inakaa rais that you can't even believe that it's happening this yani, hata wewe utaamini yani ameokoka basi hivyo it's because you're operating from a place of peace haleluya ni kwa sababu unafanya kazi katika eneo la amani upako wa amani that's what jesus did yes ita hiyo ndio yesu alifanya he found those people aliwatafuta wale watu who knew that they were poor in spirit ha watu ambao walijitambua kuwa ni maskini wa roho and he let his peace rest upon them na akaachia amani yake itulie juu yao and when he came across those people na alipompata hao huyo that were not poor in spirit he came back and told my hana um maskini wa roho maskini wa roho he did not waste his time huyo apoteste naye <laughs> he withdrew his peace alichukua mali yake akapita naye and he saved it for another oh hallelujah akaihifadhi kwa ajili ya maskini wa roho that is your evangelism lesson sasa hiyo ndio somo lako la kufanya evangelism wow i like it you will receive power utapokea nguvu when the holy ghost comes upon you wakati roho takatifu atakuja juu yako you will be my witnesses na utakuwa mwanafunzi shahidi wangu you don't have to be an eloquent speaker si lazima uwe mbiri maarufu you don't have to be skilled in persuasion si lazima uwe umesoma masomo ya ushawishi you simply release your peace haleluya unaachilia tuwe amani kupeana injili si ya shara it's supernatural ni kitu cha kiroho it is the miracle of the new birth ni mujiza wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili everything changes in that moment kila kitu badilika dakika hiyo if the christian life is anything it's supernatural kama kuna kitu kuhusu maisha ya ukristo basi ni huo Mungu na ni ujiza na kiroho we believe in a god who came to earth tunamwamini Mungu alikuja duniani born of a virgin akazaliwa na bikra who rose from the dead aliyefufuka kutoka kwa wafu that's the foundation of our faith huo ndio msingi wa imani yetu so why would we go out to share the gospel in the flesh sasa tutatokaje twende kushirikisha imani kwa kimwili when the gospel message is in itself supernatural kama iji yenyewe ni akirona kimuchiza utaimbilije kimwili bana it's it's mind blowing to me yani mimi haimeleni hii nafunja kiliamo that i trust in god for my eternal destiny ya kwamba naamini mungu kwa ajili ya maisha yangu ya milele and then i spend the rest of my time on earth alafu hadi 
trying to shrink the gospel message down to something that I understand that will allow me to stay in my comfort zone. Your destiny awaits you outside the walls of this church. And this is a great church. And you have a great pastor. I say that because I want to make him say nice things about himself. Thank you for that. Sometimes when we want to know if someone understands what we're saying, we say, are you picking up what I'm laying down? Are you picking up what I'm laying down? What do you do when you find your man of peace? I'm telling you, in that moment, it's the easiest thing in the world. You found your man of peace. Your peace is resting upon him. You can't mess it up. It was never up to you in the first place. Jesus only said go. He never told us to win anyone to the Lord. He said, go be my witnesses. Release peace and let it abide where it is received. And the supernatural God that we serve will be faithful. I want to remind you of these words again. For it is not you who speak. But the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This means Hallelujah. Amen. Who were here on Friday when we were uh, ministering through Zoom conferencing. Um, Kitu ambacho niliambia pasta wenu na nyinyi mliokuwa hapa wakati tukalo mbili kwa mkutano wa Zoom is that Pastor Richard and Bishop Moses and myself Pastor Richard Bishop Moses na Pastor uh, Dan we are believing God sisi ni Mungu aishie we believe that he's raising up a new generation tunaamini kwamba anainua kizazi kipya of revivalists and evangelists who will carry the fire of God and will release it and light fires for God wherever they go releasing peace and letting your peace rest upon a worthy place. It's when you're operating in the spirit that we have the opportunity to taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Okay. I, I would love to uh, pray for each person who would like to enlist in this army of revivalists and evangelists. Fill their mouths.
in your words. I speak a holy boldness to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ forward. To release your peace and change the world one soul at a time in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I want to talk to the person who is here today. Who is not walking in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Let me tell you about myself. Like the Apostle Paul, I was the chief of sinners. I used people. To get what I wanted. I carried a lot of regrets. Over the things that I did to people. I tried to change. In my own strength. But I failed. Over and over again. I was heading down a bad path. I was becoming an alcoholic. And my life was out of control. And I began to think. I wonder if God could make a difference in my life. And so I I went to my earthly father and I told him how I was feeling. And he prayed with me to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. I know that everything good in my life is because of the goodness of God and what he has done in my life. It's not hard for me to recognize my poverty of spirit because I know me better than you know me. And I know that if God removed his blessing from my life, I would destroy everything good in my life. If you're here today and you have never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, don't wait another day. Today is the day of salvation. Perhaps you're here today and you were raised in church. But something happened in your life. It was uh, a death of a loved one, a tragic event. A job loss or a tremendous sickness. Something happened, a trauma in your life that knocked you off course and the devil wants you to believe that you've gone too far from God I'm here to tell you today the devil is a liar and God stands ready and willing to receive you unto himself today. Perhaps you're here today and you struggle with the concept of having assurance of your salvation. I want you to know that you can pray a prayer with me today and by the authority of God's word you can know that you're saved 
ukajua ya kwamba umeokoka Amen. 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 Now, if you fit any one of those three categories, that's a skiza. I, I want you to just raise your hand right where you're at. Kama hayako ni moja ya zile hali tatu zilizoelezwa na mbili. Don't wait. Wait up on all good. Don't delay. Usigoje. Let me do it like this. With every head bow and every eye closed. Hebu tufunge macho na tuwasho. Mtu asangalie kama If you fit any one of those three categories that I mentioned, kama uko katika mmoja wapo ya zile nafasi tatu, I want you to raise your hand real quickly so now I can see you. Now God bless you, I see your hand. God bless you, I see your hand. God bless you, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Asante. Amen. You can put it up and then uh, you can put it right back down. Don't wait. This is your day. Everything changes today. If you didn't raise your hand, but you know you need to, just raise it up real quickly right now. God bless you. Now, here's what I want you to do. Remember, everything in the Bible operates by faith. I want you to trust me and take perhaps the biggest step of faith that you've ever taken in your life. I'm going to count to three. When I, count, when I say three, I want you to stand to your feet and come and meet me right here at the altar. Naomba usimame nikisema tatu na uje paka hapa mbele. Here's what's going to happen. Kuna kitu kitatendeka. I'm going to say a prayer, nitasema ombi, and you're going to repeat it out loud after me. Na wewe utafuata ombi hilo nani? And when we finish that prayer, natakapomaliza ombi hilo, you will be saved. Utakuwa umeokoka. Father in the name of Jesus. Baba katika jina la Yesu. Fill this building. Jaza jengo hili with faith. Na iman to believe. La ya kuamini for your best for our lives. Ya kwamba una una unatakia mema maisha yetu. In the name of Jesus. Katika jina la Yesu. Amen. Amen. One, moja, two, mbili, three. Stand to your feet and come meet me right here. Mama na unje mbele. Don't wait. Don't put it off. Some have come. Join them. Go. Don't put off for tomorrow. We see I wish you could receive today. Kile ubacho naza potele. There are others that would come. Join the Baba Bakari. God bless you. Mungu akubariki. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For the one person who's out here that raised your hand but you didn't come, you come now. It's okay. The Father is waiting with open arms for you. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. Today can be the best day of the rest of your life. Will you come? Amen. God bless you. I want you to know that you, you are some reason that I came to Africa to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus. Would you repeat this prayer out loud after me? Jesus said, whoever confesses me before man, I will confess him before my father. That's why we pray out loud. Just repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I believe you died for my sins and arose from the grave to give me victory over sin and death. I confess my sin to you. 
please forgive me of my sin. And come into my heart and life. And make me a new person. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let me share something with you. Did you don't just look at me. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now you're a whoever, right? Of course you are. We all are. Let me ask you a question. Does God lie? Now, when you prayed that prayer after me, you called on the name of the Lord. So if you call, the, the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You called on the name of the Lord. God doesn't lie. So I have a question for you. Are you saved? Yes, you are. By the authority of God's word, you're saved. You're born again, and you're on your way to heaven because you want Jesus. I'm proud of you. I can't wait to come back here sometime in the future and see what God has done in your life. Yeah.